and thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be teaching you about an art style from Maori and it is called Toi Whakahido or also known as uh, New Zealand carvings. So in these carvings we see elements from natures like the fern which meant the eternal life, the life cycle, and other elements. So if you live close to the Winfield Public Library, you can go ahead and pick up a bag of supplies for this project. That includes some modeling clay, some tools to use to do our uh, engraving or our textures that we're gonna put on. And so you can go ahead and pick that up. If you don't live close by, or if supplies have run out by the time you watch this video, then you can go ahead and make your own air dry clay. We'll put a little recipe in the comments below so you can find out how to make your own air dry or you can buy some from a craft store. So go ahead and grab your supplies and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the Maori culture. So let's grab our supplies and learn a little bit more. So to give you a little bit more information about these carvings, let's go ahead and do some research. It's always good when you are learning about something new or wanting to honor someone else's culture, we do our research and we don't just surface level. We want to always dig deep and make sure we're honoring that culture. So some things about the Maori carvings in wood, bone, or stone, they have unique designs and special meanings. Rather than being purely decorative, the Maori carvings each give a unique narrative. There are stories in these carvings. The stories passed down through generations explain cultural traditions and tribal history. Traditionally, the carvers were men. Their crafts include woodworking, weapons, tools, musical instruments, canoes, decorative panels, posts for various buildings within the village. A novice carver could expect to spend 20 years mastering the craft of carving. Some symbols and patterns that you'll see in the Maui carvings are through different tribes are different. Traditionally, patterns were found from nature, so spider webs, fish scales, and the fern. So for this project, we're going to be using a toilet paper tube or any kind of cylinder like this where we can wrap our clay around. And then any kind of tools to make marks into the clay. So a fork, a spoon, uh, a like piece of wood, or even a Q-tip, anything like this will work. So whatever you have in your house, if you're picking up a bag from the Winfield Library, some of these various things will be in those bags as well as some model magic. Now, I like model magic for air dry clay. You can get them pretty cheap in these individual bags. And I like getting the little bags more than a big bag because then you can, it's not gonna dry out. You open this bag, you use this bag. You don't have to open up multiple at one time because once you let air in, then it's gonna dry out. I don't care how you wrap it up or put it into Ziploc baggies, it always dries out for me. Or you can also make your own air dry clay and I will put a recipe that I like to use in the description below. So you don't need any of these supplies, you can make it all yourself and we will be using this template for our Maori uh, sculpture. So and a lot of times in these sculptures you see faces, So a lot of times these faces that you'll see in the carvings, the mouth is open with the tongue sticking out and the eyes protruding. This expression, uh, this kind of like grimace uh, is used during war dances from the Maori and the lines on the Maori carvings, they are from the tattoos, which traditionally you had on the faces and it would just make you look fierce to scare off enemies. So we're gonna flatten out the clay. And you can also paint this clay once it's dry. I can press it into paper. So 
the first thing we want to do is make the shape of the face. So you can rip it, reconnect it. We're going to be wrapping this clay around the toilet paper tube. You can use a rolling pin as well. You can use a spoon to press. So now this was about one package and then I'm gonna split another package in half. And we're gonna be making these lines and we're gonna do this all by taking bits of clay and rolling them. So we wanna make coils. So you can set this aside. You can go like this. And I spread my fingers to make the coil. If you like making things out of clay like this, I have another video where I make some ornaments or house decorations on my channel, and you can check that out after we finish this Maori carving. So here we go, I have a coil, and I can start to use this for other areas. I could also flatten it out, because I'm gonna start with this, the mouth, I'm gonna flatten it. So I'm gonna press it to get this coil to be wider, so it's kind of like a line. We're thinking about lines. And now I'm gonna bring it all the way from the point up. We're gonna curve, come down kind of like a heart, up and back down. Now it would be ideal if I did that long enough. So I'm gonna need a little bit more, coil it, flatten it. It's okay if it wasn't long enough you can just break yourself off enough to connect. And it sticks, you see that? It just stuck right to it. I just pressed lightly, but I want there to be a relief. A relief means that it's coming off of the plane. So this is how we're building up our sculpture. So now with this little bit, I'm gonna add, this will be that little tongue, but it's gonna come to a V, so I'm just pinching it. I'm gonna put it right there. And now I'm gonna do this U shape. Again, taking a coil, running it in my hands, running it on the paper. This one doesn't need to be that long, but if you make it too long, you can always break off the bits you don't need. And again, this one's gonna be pressed. And it's gonna come right here. And break it off. Now I want those little half circles, or they could be full circles. I think I'm gonna go ahead, do full circles, and I'm gonna press them right in. Now you can add more of these decorations or less. You don't have to follow this template exactly. Look at the examples that I've shown you. Try to use it as inspiration to come up with your own. And now we're gonna move on up. I'm gonna do those little circles there because I have this right here. We're also gonna use, I like to use the fork to get some uh, impressions in. So you could always add some of these lines to kind of represent those like tattoos, those markings, make it look fierce. And you can do this as much as you want. You can also go ahead and paint it later as well. That's always an option, but you don't have to paint it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do this kind of Y section. I'm gonna need a little bit more for that section rolling it out and then I'm gonna flatten it. 
So I'm gonna do the middle is gonna be one section and then it's gonna split off. So I might only do this part and flatten it out. The more clay you have, the higher it's gonna stand or raise off your initial plane. It's too high. And you see, you just rip off what you don't need. You can always take it there, make sure you like the way it looks. Maybe I want a little wider. And I'm still adjusting it as it goes on. And now I want the Y part. Two lines going each way. And now I'm going to do that V on top. And that's kind of going to cover up those seams. There we go. I'm going to keep going with this section so that oval or like um, almond shape. We're just gonna pinch the sides to get a point. We're pinching. And that's gonna go right there. Make sure not to press too hard. A little bit will make it stick, because I want, you can see, I'm building it up. It's coming off the page even more. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do these two little lines here and vary your lines. I'm doing small lines, big lines. I'm going to do two bigger circles and then one smaller. I want these to be symmetrical. I want them to be the same size. And then two littler ones inside of that. And that's really starting to come off. So now my last section is right here. And this is the eyes. And I think my nose is too big. So you can just pull them right off if you don't like them. Not a problem. There we go, that's much better. So now, going for my eye section. Then pressing it out. And you could always use your supplies Maybe I should have been doing that earlier. Press it out. And then break it off. There we go. And now we want our eyes. Now these can be fairly big. and I do want them to stick out. And then the little pupil. But I think I want my pupil to be flat. The eye itself can be big, but the pupil is gonna be small or flat. And you can always go back and take 
your tools and like flatten out areas. You can play with the things you have, but I think I'm pretty happy with how that looks. And so now I wanna go back and do some texture. I really like the fork when it comes to mark making. You could use the end of a spoon to get a nice line for texture. You could play with the end of the fork to get dots. I'm gonna do the dots in the skin area, like here. So play. There's no right and wrong, just use the images as inspiration. So there. And now I have more than half of that second package left, and we're gonna be wrapping this around our, our toilet paper tube. Now you can see it's kind of coming away there, so you can just use your hand, press it in. You can gently put it here. And I'm gonna take this half, and I'm gonna cover it here, so that way it can attach to itself. We're gonna take it and we're gonna flatten it out. If you have a rolling pin, you can use a rolling pin or you can just use your fingers. So keep going till you have a nice flat sheet. So you'll notice you can even stretch it and pull it and then you just flatten it back down. So we're getting a pretty good sheet there. We don't need to cover the entire tube, but if you have enough to do that, you totally can. Also, if you have extra air dry clay, you could go ahead and do one of the hook shapes and make a piece of jewelry out of it. I'm gonna rip off a little bit here because I don't need it to be all the way, the face is gonna attach. So why have extra under there that doesn't need to be there? But I do want it to cover all And you can even have it wrap around so it doesn't show. But at the bottom, you don't want it to wrap because you want it to be able to stand up. So I'm just pressing it now. And you can even use it, press it in, press it onto the cardboard. We're using this cardboard so we don't waste clay, so it's hollow. It's lighter. So you can see it can still stand up. And now we can attach the face to it. And I'm gonna put a little bit down here because I don't want the bottom of the toilet paper tube to show. So I'm gonna wrap down. Okay, so there we go. I have it wrapped. It can stand up still, make sure it can still stand. And now we're gonna attach our face. We're gonna gently wrap it and press it into the clay. Gently pressing it into itself. It sticks really well to itself. And there we go. We have our Maori carving sculpture. I'm going to go ahead and pull this down a little bit lower so that way we're not having it show and I have a little bit of clay left over so I can maybe even make a piece of jewelry from that. So here is our beautiful sculpture. Let it dry for at least 24 hours and then you could paint it with you know paint or with markers even. Uh, don't use washable markers because they won't stick but make sure you like how everything looks. And I think that looks pretty cool. So there we have this. So why not make a quick little coil and make a piece of jewelry? So I'm gonna make a quick coil. I actually think I have enough for two pieces. I'm 
and you could do this multiple different ways. You can make a fin, because a lot of times we see things from nature and from the sea. So we could do a little wrap like that and press it out. I'm gonna make it thick at the bottom, thinner at the top, and we can put a piece of uh, string through there and wear that as a necklace. Or we could do a coil or a twist. And I'm just gonna wrap this kind of like a fern. So we're gonna spiral, twisting. And don't forget to poke a little hole in it for your string to go through. There we go. So if you have any left over, you can experiment with making jewelry. And you know what, I'll put a little hole in this one too so it lays flat when you wear it. There you go. Now don't forget, when you're letting it dry, have it sit up, that's gonna be a better way to let it dry. And these, don't have them rest on paper because paper will absorb moisture. You can put them on a cookie tray or even on something that can't absorb moisture um, even the laminate of a wood would be better than paper. So let it sit up a little bit so it can dry nicely. Don't put them in the oven, uh, they will crack. So let them just air dry. So I hope you had fun learning about New Zealand's sculptures and carvings that are typically done out of wood and bone, but we use clay for our means to understand and appreciate this culture. So remember, let it sit out for at least 24 hours, and then you could go ahead, you could paint it, you could draw on it. Now, typically, like if we were going to do this and, you know, with the, like with the culture, it wouldn't be painted generally, maybe a little bit of color. So I'm gonna leave mine white and just appreciate the texture that I put into it uh, and appreciate it for that sculpture, the relief and the dimension that we're getting on it. So I hope you had a good time learning about New Zealand. If you did give this video a thumbs up, share it with friends that might wanna hear about it. Remember there are craft bags at the library for as long as supplies last. So if you're hearing about this and the video is pretty new, then go ahead and pick it up from the library. So in the description below, if you don't live close by, you can learn how to make your own air dry clay as well. So you don't need these supplies. So I hope you had fun, give it a thumbs up and share it with other people that might enjoy this. And I hope to see you next time. Bye friends.